Catwoman was not evil, not in the 60s. She was naughty, yes, delicious, yes. I like all the S words, susurrous, sassy, silly. The little Abner costume, act actually I wore it 42 years later on Broadway, the same costume, and it's made of two layers of um, stocking net stockings, and then there's a black velvet patch here and there, not so much here as there. They only let me on stage for 90 seconds, and I thought that wasn't fair, and I complained to Michael Kidd, told him to give me a bigger part, but he said, no. You're it, kid. That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> but it was funny because they dragged me on stage. Available Jones would bring stupefying Jones on stage, and I would be standing in a shower. And that was my debut. I admire and adore Claudette Colbert, but she's very professional. And when I wore the towel on stage, the chair that I sat in, she'd have it brought further and further downstage so that my back would then be to the audience. But the towel, it got, got draped further and further lower in, in the back, you see. So it really didn't matter. I love Claudette. Love Claudette. I'm saying I lowered the towel. I think you heard me the first time. <laughs> Catwoman, it's very easy for a ballet dancer. Because even though it looks like it's about your body, it's about how you move in the body. But I probably wasn't very good in the first show. By the third show, I had adopted some cats. And then, you know, you just pick up all that kind of movement that cats do, how they charm you, you know. And the susurrous, silly, and adorable things that they do. So it became a lot easier after the third, fourth, fifth, sixth show. Great writing, brilliant, funny, witty, magnificent, funny characters, and all you had to do was play it straight. All you had to do was put on the costume and walk on stage and say those wondrous lines. Dancers have to say things with their body without lines. And my scripts have funny little squiggles in them about you know, where I land up on stage, or actually they look like musical scripts. There's a lot to do with timing and uh, when you know where the jokes are, you know, you gotta, you gotta sort of warm them up and make them bigger and kind of, and then, and then say the line. Totally wrong, Catwoman was not evil, not in the 60s. She was naughty, yes, delicious, yes. I like all the S words, susurrous, sassy, silly, um, fun. You have to have fun with her. You have to imagine a cat that, that, I'll tell you later, because I know you're going to ask the question anyway. The costume, I changed it a little. I moved the belt from the waistline down to the hips because it was bright gold, and that, that way it would accentuate, accentuate the hips more and not make your waist look so big. But there were three secrets. Well, the body, as you say, and how you move. Well, me and Raquel Welch. Then... There was the seams, the seams in the body of how, how it was put together. That was important. And the third thing is, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to 
keep that secret. It could be lost for all time. Uh, yes, I've actually, I'm actually, I actually have it on. But you only have the camera right here. Yes. So you can't see it. Well, there's just a zipper up the back. It's really, you put one arm in, and then you put the other arm in, and then you sort of buckle it at the bottom, and you, you put on your heels, and you lose 20 pounds right away. It's a wonderful outfit for women to wear. Sometimes, if a costume is right, you don't have to act. There's a sense of knowingness, a sense of beingness, a sense that takes over that's, that's it just becomes you, you just are that thing. I mean, think of Marilyn Monroe. Think of Marilyn Monroe. Oh, bless your heart. Mm. It is good, isn't it? Life is good. What we're going to expect as we grow up is good. Things that are going to happen to us are good. And women are especially good to little boys of four or five and seeing all that kind of weirdness that we did, all those colors, all those cameras, you know, all those bing, bang, bong. Mm. Yeah, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> You know, you doll it up, you put the lipstick on, you put the shiny Lurex costume on, and you do the eyebrows, although there really wasn't very much makeup. They only give you 20 minutes. And I didn't have a makeup man. I just kind of invented eyebrows that went kind of weirdly. Uh, but it worked, you know. I really think you have to give credit to the producer, hmm, to William Dozier. He'd had a lot of experience, and he hired very good people. He had wonderful writers. He put the best people together. And to top it off, casting was perfection, wasn't it? Mm. Except when they replaced you. That was the only shortcoming. Ah. Well, it's nice to be wanted, isn't it? Color had recently come in television, and uh, the art director was given full reign to use as many colors as he could, as many gels on the lights, the, 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 the way the camera, of course, we all know how it was tilted, the fancifulness of it, the, uh, the writing, always, 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 always the writing, too. In one of the six shows, there was something kind of slapdash. And things happen. You can't get a hold of this actor for that part, and this doesn't fit here. And then you, and I was thrown in at the last minute, and Stanley Ralph Ross didn't write the last show. He'd written the first five. And he was just, mm, perfection. He knew how to use all those words and, and make this kind of silly, incredible magic uh, that the show was to everybody. You know, there's one age of, of people that don't like the show. And it's kids about somewhere around 8, 9, or 10 when everything has to be for real. They stop believing in Santa Claus. And you don't want to have this fancifulness. No, it's got to be very... Uh, so you jump over that age, and then up until the 90s, people love it. Most interesting is that now we have grandfathers that will come up to me on the street and tell me very interesting things. Um, there was a father with his son, and he was a little bit nervous because the son didn't want to come and see, oh, she's a cowwoman, you got to see her, she's just, you know, all that. And so he drags this kid, and the kid hides behind the father's leg. He's, he's about that two and a half, three years old, a little scared. And the father just can't do anything about it. And finally, from behind him, up walks the grandfather. He comes up to me and he looks me straight in the eyes and he says, 
You really turned me on. I have to tell you. But that would happen often on the street. Men would walk up to me and tell me that I was their first turn on. And kind of odd thing to say, but I finally got up the courage to ask them how old they were when this happened. <laughs> and the answer would be, oh, four, five. I mean, interesting, isn't it? Hmm. I had this man write to me uh, from Canada. He was very well spoken. I think he was an English professor or something. And he said, oh, when I first saw you, it was magic right, right away. He said, oh, I, had to go, I had to go and lie down. It just was overwhelming. And it took me days to understand what he meant by that. You're grimacing. You're holding your... No, I'm imagining what it meant. Yes, well, he's right. What's not to be loved about being sexy? I mean, ask anybody. That's a stupid question, isn't it? I'm going to say yes. Do you mind being sexy? <laughs> Do you mind being sexy? It's stupid down right here, sir. <laughs> Catwoman and Batman. Well, I kind of just wanted to bat him around, play with him. I wasn't sure whether I was really in love with him. Yeah, he, he, he's okay. No, but... Huh. Um, they did make something about the romance of it. I thought it was kind of silly. Uh, but fun, really, you know, with that straw and what you could do with a straw. Uh, but I didn't like the way Catwoman had to act because when she was in love with him, she had to sort of feign this femininity, you know. And being uh, f f uh, 5 feet 11 and Adam is about 6, 1 or 2, um, it's like when I danced with Fred Astaire, I had to sort of uh, shrink myself a little bit, bend my knees, see. And, um, hmm. But those were the days, those were the 60s, when, when women were uh, feminine, ultra, kind of, not as, well, we hadn't burned our bras yet. We still wore them. Or, or did we? Yeah, we did. Mm, who am I thinking of? Many of the great movie stars in the 40s and 50s were either acrobats or uh, strong physical men before they became actors. And so that really, really gave them a, an additional mastery with words, I think, having it to be able to physicalize words. Burt Lancaster, you know, I'm thinking of great. Wasn't he in the circus? Didn't he, was, didn't he do a lot of tumbling? Yeah. Really, the answer to that is that my first career well, was a dancer. It was my favorite career. So I had to say all these things with my body and no words at all. Uh, but that in itself is it, built on music also. Music is very, very important. What do you mean by that? Explain. <sighs> oh, as I was driving over here, I was listening to Mozart's 39th symphony. And if, if there's anything that's orgiastic in its beauty and its sweetness and its in its Mozart is the greatest of all composers. I think the people that were driving on either side of me thought I was doing something rather irrational. Mm, but, mm. Well, I adored Frank Gorshin. He's so 
or again physically just a, a magician. Um, uh, he could do any, anything with his body and, and his voice too. Uh, one of the reasons that Catwoman was, I don't know, the, the favorite villain? Maybe not, maybe yes. It's the male female again. It's always that you have that you have that natural, natural great conflict. Uh, there was one scene that happened about eight o'clock at night, and by that time you start going on golden time, and the producers you see them sweating, you know, <gasps> just shoot the shoot the rehearsal, go on, do it, do it, and it was a difficult scene. It was four or five minutes, and it was. A seduction scene, actually, of Batman, and there was his stairs. Where I would walk down these stairs with a uh, this oh, I'm coming apart. Excuse me. Um, so I sort of slid down the stairs. You see, actually, in in actual fact, I choreographed the entire scene and told the cameraman where to be and the other actors, and they said we can do this whole thing in one take. Just follow me. Here, here, and there. That's where I'm going to land up. We did it. We were out. Producer adored me. And it was one of the really the best scenes in the show for me and Adam. And it's quite fun. They show it all the time on YouTube. I love being identified with Catwoman. And one of the main reasons is this, that there will always be a Catwoman. I mean, you put on that costume, Black, tight, you lose 20 pounds right away, you look great, you've got high heels, you've got great dialogue, you have fun. It, it will be one of the choice roles for women of all time. See, here's the difference, and here's what people don't understand, and I hear it, if I've heard it a thousand times, oh, we like the 60s version as opposed to later versions. And the real reason is because we were not at war. Well, no, we weren't. We, you know, we just helped Europe come out of war. America was loved. Americans were feeling good. They were happy. It was a joyous time. Lots of fun things were happening. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you know, we were at one rapacious war after another. So there's that darkness that came into the stories. And it's been dark ever since. I think if you, you walk into a theater, Batman's become so dark you don't know which way to turn to look at the screen, you see. But it does reflect the times we're in. And that's always the way it is in making films or telling stories on cam with a camera. My brother uses the word camp. That kind of sends me up the wrong way. But he's right. It is camp, but unless you played it straight, you'd be putting too much effort in it. You'd, you, it would sort of unhinge itself. It like the seams would come apart. You'd be seen being clever or cute or something. And when that happened, some actors would do that. It, it, didn't, it didn't have that kind of tension that it needed, because you have to be loyal to the story. You, people have to believe. They have to believe you before they're going to laugh at you, before you fall down, before this or that happens. They have to believe you. That's the crux of, of all humor. It's just a, it's like music. There's different kinds of humor. You know? Uh, mm. So you're saying some actors would kind of... They kind play of at camp. Wrong. Right, yeah. Don't... No, not so. And you're in this weird costume, you're doing all these strange things with these odd lines. No. You must absolutely believe that you are that cat. Uh, I think um, Bert said it very well. He just had a generally great time with Adam on screen being that character, and he was wonderful. He was wonderful. I look at their performances now and I think, oh, they are the best. I don't think anyone will top them. No one has so far. But 
again, it's that lightness and humor of the 60s made it a little more pleasurable for people, even though they knew it was we were making fun of something or other. Well, I got better as it went along because playing a, a, an animal character, you got to feel that way, look that way, sound that way, uh, behave that way, so it takes some learning. It's, uh, it, uh, I did get better by the third show and the fourth show. I was much more cat-like. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother came down from Harvard, and we were sitting in my living room in New York. I had a penthouse on Beekman Place. He had five or six friends there, and a phone call came and, and asked something about Catwoman uh, in this show, Batman, and he overheard me. I said, I never heard of this, and uh, he said, oh, you got to do it, because we stop everything we do at Harvard, hello, and watch the show. So I flew out the next day, had the co costume fitting and rehearsals on the set, and there you go. My Living Doll came before Batman, 64, and it was in black and white. Um, it would be re-released in February, and I'm rather happy about that, except that they haven't found all the shows, and some of them were just wonderful. This, the Living Doll was the most difficult show I, I've ever performed in. Well, I mean, how does a human being be a robot that people can identify with? I mean, you, you just don't come off and do uh, uh, ro robotish things. You really have to have a life. So it was very difficult. It took me 13 episodes to get any kind of, so I felt as if I was moving from the inside out instead of from the brain, just telling my body what to do. I trained, uh, I don't like that word, <clears throat> I'm a member of the actor studio. And famously, you want to believe, you go into what's called sense memory. You remember a situation that uh, allowed you to express a certain emotion. And it's kind of difficult because you, you got this going on, you got that going on, and you, something else is coming out here. And the people that are really good at it, it's very difficult to do. It's not a mechanical thing. It's a really, really, really brilliant thing when done well. Because if you believe it, the audience believes it. And, and thus, you take them in or you become, there's that oneness, that, that holy, just being in that perfect sense that is so magical when it happens. And that's why the theater is so wonderful for actors, because we can keep polishing that and, and, and correcting that and making it, and how did we do that line, and this didn't get the laugh, and you know all those inside things that you go through, so that when you come out on stage and take your bow, it's not an embarrassment. As an actor, you have to know where the laughs are. And when you set up a joke for someone, it has to be very clear. You see, and then when the laugh comes, you have sort of had this musical sense, okay, there's two beats here, there's three beats here, and then you make your move. It's, it's a, oh gosh, I learned a lot from Phil Silvers when I had the opportunity of working with him when I was just 18 or 19. Phil Silvers, God bless him. What a great artist. What a generous man. He, he helped me. I'd never done any comedy. And he, he showed me how to do it. He showed me how to deliver the lines. He showed me that, no, you've got to say it to, to the audience or they're not going to hear it, et cetera, et cetera. All those beautiful, wonderful things. He was protecting his own show, but what a wonderful man. Hmm. Is favorite? Yeah, I've done so many. Uh, wow. I don't like science fiction because I don't believe those people as an actor. I want to believe that you're from this, I don't know, thousands of years away. It, it, it just comes across mostly as pretty hokey. I find them difficult to do. Star Trek, difficult, difficult. 
So, you, so now you see you need this, this other connection to an audience. You know, Shatner has it. He does it good. Love the monkeys. But they were such freewheeling guys. They were so light and spontaneous and natural and fun to be with and inventive and, and uh, have a good director. And then it's, it's just a piece of cake. Mm. Did Buck Rogers remember that one? Oh. And why do you make the face? Because it's stiff. You know, it's not fun. It's not... You know, I like the I like comedy. Comedy, comedy requires uh, a very high, kind of highly developed musical sense. The timing is is so important. There's something that's that that it just lifts you out of the doldrums. I I, I don't like all that down, dirty, and serious stuff. I saw it once in a therapy session. Somebody did me. Ah, it was in his. Derek's. I laughed so hard. My lap was full of tears. I finally ended up on the floor sc just screaming with laughter because someone was <laughs> being me. Am I that silly? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. I have, have a wonderful career. It seems that every 10 years I have a new career or a new life or something new, new is happening. Uh, now it's uh, writing. Who was more beautiful, more gorgeous than, than Lucille Ball, and then she turns into this great clown? Ooh! -hoo. But she had a wonderful husband, wonderful producer, he, who made all these situations so good for her and all the, all the other people that appeared on that show and other shows that he's done. He was a he was great producer. It's what allowed her to be mm, so wonderful. And she was so beautiful at um, RKO, RKO, that's right. Amazing. I loved working with James Mason. Great actor. Also very generous because he was so good. He had so much. He was, it was easy for him to give to, to help you, to put you in the right light, to, to not to tell you how to do things, but to make it possible for you to be good. That's what great actors are, uh, are like. Mm. Robin Williams is like that. Robin Williams is gem to work with. Gem. That's because he's so good. See, he can afford to be generous because he's so gifted. That's quite a, a precision with the language, with the words, with the dialogue. You know, you had to come in at the right moment and it just had to work exactly right and this had to happen and then, you know, it would fall and, and the, 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 all the gizmos and gadgets and stuff that was going on, you know. It, that was more, not by the numbers, but very precise. Quite like a dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a form of love making, but it's also like, you, you're like dolphins. You just wait for your friend or your beloved to move, and then you move in, in a way that suits him. And there's this kind of play, you know, in, in the water. You can, you can really see how it works. Um, and it works with good actors that way. But he had wonderful dialogue. A lot of the time is, it's not always doing something. It's the lack of doing all the time. It's waiting and feeling and sensing and re reacting and uh, being a, a good partner. You know, it's being able not to be the center of attention, but, but allowing the tension to kind of sweeten your energy. Hmm. Gosh, that's, that's a long one. <laughs> I like to make other people important because uh, it makes me feel good. See, that's how I feel good. When I ask a question of someone else that allows them to uh, tell me good thing, great things about themselves, 
and, and then I, I feel my security. I feel at ease. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't like being the center of attention. It's, it's time consuming, you know? Got three hours in makeup and all that. <laughs> you gotta this, that, and the other. You gotta be brilliant all the time. Hmm. No, I'd rather, sh I think I'd rather share the attention with someone.